Hello, and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Emmanuel Kadosh here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. The Israeli security cabinet has put a 10-day freeze on plans to massively expand the Palestinian city of Qalqalia in the Israeli-controlled part of the West Bank. Various ministers in the government coalition were reportedly caught off guard by the plans to build up to 14,000 new housing units in Qalqalia, a city and area C that lies just a few miles from Tel Aviv. While the military establishment as well as Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman have said the plans was discussed and approved in the cabinet, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that Lieberman never told the cabinet that the plans involved construction of 14,000 housing units. The cabinet will reconvene in 10 days to make a final decision on the plan, which Lieberman says will incentivize the Palestinians to maintain peace and quiet. But other political figures like Education Minister Naftali Bennett are expressing serious concerns when it comes to expanding a Palestinian city so close to major Israeli population centers and settlement leaders like Yossi Dagan want to know when the Prime Minister will devote a little more time to advancing the construction plans for Israelis in Judea, Somalia and throughout the country. It seems as though Avi Gabay is already starting to fill the shoes of a political leader. Since following his Labour Party election victory, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas called to congratulate him. The phone call was more than simple pleasantries, though, as according to a statement released by Gabay, he reportedly asked Abbas during the call to return to regular meetings with Prime Minister Netanyahu. He said, quote, peace doesn't occur in international meetings or regional conferences. It begins with creating trust and goodwill between both parties. The two went on to apparently trade ideas on how to reach the elusive Middle East peace deal when Abbas stressed a two-state solution that takes into account previous international resolutions. And Gabay instructed Abbas to start with curbing anti-Semitic and anti-Israel incitement in Palestinian school books. The results of this conversation remain to be seen, but many believe it's a start to something bigger. In a statement on Gabay's website, Gabay confidently writes, the conflict can be resolved. In a family vacation gone horribly wrong, a tragic traffic accident in Russia yesterday has claimed the life of a 12-year-old Israeli girl. Three other people were in the vehicle at the time of the crash, a local resident who also died in the impact, and the girl's parents who survived with light injuries. The cause of the crash, which occurred just 30 kilometers from the Chinese border in the city of Kabarovsk, has not yet been determined. The foreign minister is now in contact with local Russian authorities and the girl's parents to both close the investigation into the incident and bring the body back to Israel for burial. In the ultimate sign of normalizing ties between Israel and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Israeli Communications Minister Ayaoub Ka'ara is now attempting to broker a deal for direct flights from Tel Aviv to the Muslim holy city of Mecca. As the fifth pillar of Islam, Muslims around the world are obligated to make the pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their lifetime. The journey, or Ha'aj, for Israelis can be quite complicated though. The thousands of Muslim Israelis attempting the trip would have to take buses across both Jordan and Saudi Arabia for a total of 1,350 kilometers, or 850 miles. Some Muslims during Ramadan are also permitted to enter Saudi Arabia from Israel, but they too must first fly to Jordan. So the good and bad news about this deal is that, as Minister Ka'ala says, the Saudis and Jordanians are, quote, ready to do it. But it's very sensitive and it's still a matter of negotiation. One thing is for sure, though, major steps towards positive relations are continuing to be made at all times. Israeli officials have been hinting at an Israeli-Saudi peace for a long time now, even insinuating that the Saudis might play a role in the Middle East peace process. Even Saudi Arabia's foreign minister said that he is optimistic that a peace deal can be reached within a year. Two days ago, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu blasted Irish Foreign Minister Simon Coveney over Ireland's support for the Palestinians. Despite Netanyahu's harsh stance, though, Coveney was in meetings again yesterday with President Reuven Rivlin in Jerusalem, and the conversation had a very different tone. During their meeting, Rivlin, like Netanyahu, also stressed his opposition to boycotts, BDS, and other such movements. But Rivlin defended his calm before the meeting, saying, quote, I think the relationship between Israel and Ireland 
Island is very important, in spite of differences of opinion which we have from time to time. Kovni admitted that the Irish interest in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict was due to what he considers a common history between the conflict in the Middle East and those of Dublin's past. He went on to say that he knows, quote, there is an impression here that Ireland takes a different position to Israel. Can I say that in essence, though, we are yearning for the same thing, which is a peaceful future. That's all for now. I'm Emmanuel Kadosh, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.